Hi, welcome to another episode of Counter Punch with Trevor Loudon. Please like the show, share the show, and above all, subscribe on Epoch TV. Now today I'm going to talk about some misunderstandings on Marxism and communism and how they're dramatically affecting uh, the future of the world, how, how we may lose the planet because of these misunderstandings. Now you have a situation out there now where Russia and China are both arming. Russia is threatening Eastern Europe, China is threatening India, the Far East, Taiwan, and Iran is threatening the Middle East, and we have a red tide sweeping through Latin America. Venezuela is communist, Nicaragua is communist, Chile has just elected a far leftist, Peru has gone the same way, so has Honduras. The balance of power in the world is changing and, and the West is in a perilous state. And they got there through a massive misunderstanding or a series of misunderstandings. Some of them deliberately fostered. Now I'd like to clear up the first one which I think is very important. Now back in the 70s, Kissinger and Nixon sold the America on the idea that China could be wooed away from the Soviet Union. That had allegedly been a split between China, communist China, and, and the Soviet Union. And America could get in there and, and give them trading rights and develop business and, and China would become democratic and more Western. And it could be wooed out of the communist bloc. And lots and lots of money was put into this. And American foreign policy was worked around this concept. Because especially after Deng Xiaoping came to power in 1976 and started to open up the economy, you started to see businesses spring forward. All the big commentators thought, well, yes, this is China's going off the communist road. China is seeing the advantages of capitalism. China is moving into our camp, and all we have to do is keep giving them money, build factories on their territory, open up everything we can, the World Trade Organization, etc., and everybody would live happily ever after. And when the Soviet Union collapsed in the early 90s, that philosophy went on steroids. Let's make money with China. Let's bring China into the Western fold. You know, both President Bush's talked incessantly about how they wanted a strong China as a partner in the world. Well, there's a big problem with that. China never went off the communist road. Once it went on, it has never come off. People have a massive misunderstanding about what communism is. Now, you can read this in the Vietnamese literature and the, um, the Chinese literature. Vietnam and China have both adopted free market policies, and according to Westerners, that means they are no longer communist, right? Okay, they've adopted capitalist policies so they can't be communist. Well, that's because these people don't understand what communism is. Now, Marx, who knew a thing or two about communism, was really the founder of the modern communist movement, not the first communist, but the most influential. Marx posited five stages of human development. The first stage, primitive communism. You're a tribe, you live in a cave, you go out and kill a mammoth, you cut the meat up, you share it amongst yourselves. That's primitive communism, where everybody shares the wealth of the tribe. That gave way to agriculture, and with agriculture, people started to develop plots of land, and they had private land. You know, they were not going to give up their, their, their produce to someone who didn't work. They were going to have private land, and, and it was a, the beginnings of a sort of private ownership of property type of system. But this developed into what they call feudalism. These private landowners needed protection from people who would steal their produce or invade their land. So you had the feudal system where warlords would reign over a certain area. You would pay tribute to the warlord in grain or taxes or sons or daughters and the warlord would protect your farm, protect your property. That's the feudal system. That's the second stage of human development. Then came capitalism. Private property started to be much more pervasive. We had legal systems coming into being, private contracts. We had the birth of the industrial age. People could use the surplus that they had created with their businesses and their factories and their farms and invest, invest money in new businesses, make a return. The, growth, the, the patents, you know, you could patent your inventions. Private property went into a newer level and human wealth exploded. 
absolutely exploded after the industrial revolution especially in the in the in europe and in the united states back in china and russia they were still largely living under the feudal system where warlords or barons would basically protect areas of land and you pay tribute that was the system in most of the world until the industrial revolution ushered in what the communists call capitalism I don't use that word capitalism, it's a Marxist term. I use the word the free market, the American free enterprise system. That's small business, that's mom and pop. Most people think of capitalism as big corporations ripping you off, as big tech stealing your data. They see it as a negative phenomenon. I'm talking about the industrial revolution brought us small businesses, it brought us patents, it brought us legal structures to protect people's earnings. It set people free. It set people on a path to wealth and prosperity. So that's, this, that's the third stage of human development. And the communists will tell you this is a great stage. This is necessary because the capitalism will produce the wealth. And then the socialist, because what capitalism will do, they say, is increase the inequalities. The rich will get richer and the poor will get poorer. Eventually the contradictions will be so strong that the poor will overthrow the rich and expropriate the wealth. Socialism, the government will take the wealth off the rich landowners and the rich capitalists and redistribute it to the poorer classes. Socialism. So socialism is the fourth stage of human development. But note, you cannot go to socialism until you've been through capitalism because capitalism is essential to produce the wealth. And of course it's based on, a, the communist theory is based on a lie because a real free market system, I'm, I'm, talk, I'm not talking about the corporate system we have today where big government works with uh, big business. I'm talking small government, individual liberty, small businesses, mom and pop, you rise or fall as far as your abilities take you. None of this corporate handouts or you know, corporate welfare, none of that, just a plain free market operating. That does not increase inequality. It brings everybody up. It means the rich can only stay rich as long as they're still producing. They're actually offering a value to people. It's the most democratic, the most just system that's ever been. But the communists smear it as capitalism. They talk about big business, crony capitalism. They call that capitalism. That is not what we mean and it's not the word that we should use because it's so tainted and so dirty now. So after you have socialism, this comes the mythical fifth stage, communism. The state will wither away. Everybody will be equal. Everybody will have an equal share of wealth from each according to his ability to each according to his need. That's the communist doctrine. That will never happen. There's never been a time in history when the state has taken over wealth and the power and production of a nation then voluntarily given it up. It doesn't happen. It won't happen. It will never happen. That's why there will never be true communism on this planet. There will only be a dictatorial, top-down socialism a la North Korea, planet-wide. That's the best we can hope for in a communist, if, if, the, if the communists dominate this planet, it'll be worldwide North Korea with American technology. Think about that.